everyone, Patricia Warby, Alchemy Therapies here. And this morning I just wanted to talk a little bit about something I've seen in the news recently, which was an article about the musician Moby, who was very famous in the 90s. He wrote a number of dance music hits and was fated by lots of celebrities and won lots of awards. But it turns out he actually had alcohol and drug problems as is quite common in that environment and he's written a book recently about his experience of that time and how it relates to his childhood trauma and as you know I'm very interested in childhood trauma so it sort of chimed with me that fame might seem to be something that all of us in our culture you know you see a lot of people on reality TV wanting to be famous but in actual fact, we seem peculiarly unable to manage it when it arrives and if it arrives, because it really requires very strong psychic strength. You need to know who your friends are, have a very good support network, and I, you know, ideally have resolved emotions from your childhood. And when that's not present, that's a real issue. Um, and we've seen it a lot with artists like uh, Kurt Cobain, you know, I think they're called the, the 28 Club or something because they all died young. Um, lots of famous people have died at that age and in fact, or was it 27? Can't remember now, but very early in their in their lives. And another example would be um, Avicii, the DJ who I watched a documentary about on TV recently as well. And he, he became really, really famous really early on and earned $60 million in two years. And just money has no meaning when you've got so much that you could buy anything. Uh, and meaning is what human beings need more than anything. We have to make meaning of our lives to feel functional, to feel alive actually, to have a soulful experience in this life. And when things become out of balance, so we have too much money or not enough, um, we money isn't everything but it it does give us options and it's one of our culture's signs and symbols of success so we judge ourselves by how much we have or don't have and we make meaning of it in other words and so um my point is that sensitive people who become writers artists mus musicians aren't psychically usually uh they're very sensitive so they pick up signals from the environment but they're not resilient in the same way um, and I regard myself as a bit of a, an artist and creative as well so I do reverberate with that. A sign of a, a sensitive individual is somebody that can walk into a room and know instantly whether the atmosphere is good or not um, and this is something I have always had. I'm always very sensitive to colour, sound, light, music moves me you know, good music will move me, as does art, beyond words. And there is actually a quiz called the Highly Sensitive Person quiz, which you can do. Um, highly Sensitive People, or HSPs, are about 30% of the population. So it's not a made-up term. It's a real definitive neurological difference in some people who, I, I guess, Beethoven was an HSP, you know, all the great musicians and artists probably were and it's often why they end up addicted because um, they can't handle their high sensitivity in a culture which doesn't support it and so um, people like Moby, Avicii, uh, Kurt Cobain and so on who die uh, well Moby isn't dead sorry Moby um, but he's come through actually he's he's managed to quit his addiction and I don't know how he did that we're waiting for the next book to hear that but sadly, so many don't um, survive their their problems. And I think for some of us, it's not the obvious addictions that that are our coping mechanisms. It can sometimes be like for me, it was workaholism, uh, perfectionism, that sort of addiction. For some, it can be shopping or sex. It's it's not always the obvious drink and drugs, but it's some mechanism by which a sensitive individual has to make sense of their lives 
and make themselves feel better. But it is really a coping mechanism, not a long term strategy, because it leads usually to further problems. So I just kind of wanted to highlight that really in a very short video today, that um, there are ways through this to recognise your sensitivity, to get support when you need it and to resolve or metabolise your childhood issues because most of us have a certain level of trauma um, and some of us have more than others. Thanks for listening.